This illusion is called leaps and endless bounds. Illusions are what I call my painting. Since I am scarred by illusion, it is only fitting. I was torn about what to paint this morning. I have a lot of loose sketches that sort of make up concepts, but none of them I was entirely enamored with. And that's how I like to be with concept sketches. I had drafted this concept earlier this week, which turned into leaps and endless bounds, but I didn't like it. Initially, I think the pose is awkward. I should have tweaked it more, but that would have, I don't know, I didn't want it to be too contrived, so I just went with it. And when I redrew it for the painting on the canvas, I made the upper body too large. So there wasn't room for the leg extended behind the body to be horizontal like it was in the concept sketch. I like the angling of the extended leg. Um, it creates depth against the flat, this like background, but it still is a bit awkward to me. I can't get away from that. Um, I do, I do love it. You couldn't tell from how critical I was, but it is very intriguing and that's, that's what I strive for. Um, my favorite detail is the eye over the Venus flytrap sort of like saw mouth, but in retrospect, another critique, I think for a more dynamic image, I should have redirected the mouth flap, if you will. Sorry, that sounds gross, but there's, there's nothing else to call it. I won't behest you to subscribe, but please do consider leaving a like or a comment. I would really appreciate it. I put out a new video every week. Last night I read another Avril Whirl short story from the Women of Weird Tales book. It seems I saved the best author stories for last. She really has been a standout of the novel selections for me. The story I read was uh, The Grey Killer. It was really disturbing and I almost thought I shouldn't, I shouldn't have read that before I went to bed. <laughs> Um, as I've tried to do the women of weird tales, I can see why short story or story compilation books aren't popular with literary agents because they don't sell. I attribute it to, as I said in another video, I think it's the shifts between author style and then that short stories are short, you know, blips. From my own experience seeking a literary agent for a novel or two I've written, I've discovered that they prefer stories with the word count that will equate to 350 pages, and also, I think, double-spaced, I can't remember, anything over 350. Uh, they don't, they don't think would sell unless you're pre-established or in the genre of sci-fi, fantasy, you know, and... They allow that because they expect those genres to require more exposition for world building. Like Harry Potter, for example, I think that broke that mold, especially for children's books. Anything less than 350 or even just 300, they don't think would be profitable for the literary agent or the publisher. So basically, you don't waste your time. That's what they're saying. After learning that, I saw it really rang true, and books that don't fit that are normally self-published. So, the odds today for the likes of the women of the Weird Tales and even like the notable Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft are that they wouldn't have any better chances at success now. And for H.P. Lovecraft, you know, the racism aside, that would probably hold him back. And at the prime, short stories... They were only found in pulp magazines, which were cheap, as the name sort of denotes. It, they were made of, like, really cheap paper, worth pennies. And in newspapers, it seems like both of which were very, very ephemeral. On another note, one of the female writers of The Women of Weird Tales also illustrated some of the covers of the pulp magazines that she wrote for. And that stirred up quite a buzz, because the women were most often, like, scantily clad damsels. You know, almost like your stereotypical... I guess maybe like retro slasher where their clothes were kind of falling off. Since I'm on short stories, in the Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosity episode, Outsider, which I was confused about, whether it was The Outsider by H.P. Lovecraft and Guillermo del Toro forgot to mention it as he introduced it, only to find out no, it was something else.
something I really didn't like. It wasn't scary so much as it was bizarre, unnerving, which I guess is a sort of fear. It was terribly slow, even on double speed. <laughs> when I watched it, I got bored, left, came back, and was still bored. And then when I was watching it, I was watching it, and I was like, where is this going? Why, why, why did she do that? Ooh, that's nasty, you know? Uh, I'm no actor, but I try to imagine when I watch certain things how actors tell their families about the roles they're gonna take or the roles they get. I mean, you have to be top tier to get, like, power roles like Meryl Streep, Angela Bassett, Viola Davis. Even, I think, Timothy Chalamet, he's gotten some power roles. He was really no fit for Spider-Man. Especially that boyish Spider-Man. That role was beneath him, let's be honest. I know that that franchise check would be would be nice, though. I really feel like <laughs> they're counting on him to carry like the whole male acting industry, but, I mean, especially for young men, it's like, who else is there? To me, I think he's a bit like an Adrian Brody in terms of versatility. Back to the Outsider episode, it, it could never be me. I, I have experienced a sort, similar sort of ostracization, 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 oh my lord, you know what I'm going for. <laughs> um, I've experienced that in my own life several times, I think, now that I think about it, but I refrain from thinking about it because it's behind me. I've truly been tested, <laughs> so I know I must be an outsider in a lot of ways, and it really builds character. I think it's built maybe my whole character, basically, yeah. Um, here's a story. In 8th grade, I upset some girls. I don't know how or which one, but it resulted in all five of them who sat at the table around me, not with me, mind you. They also made fun of me for not being talkative, that was another thing. But I don't believe in talking or participating in a conversation if I don't think I have anything to add. And the things I talked about, I had no interest in at all. They were very iPhone, Starbucks, Ugg boot, full face makeup, and boyfriend oriented sort of people. But there was nowhere else to sit, mind you this, because I was like, I wouldn't sit there, I wouldn't stay there, but, and, and I was like, I got to the point where I was like, oh, they probably don't want me to sit here, but I was like, I'm comfortable, <laughs> I'm that bitch. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm more of a Lilo and Stitch character, which is okay, because some people are Brandy, some people are Mr. Whiskers, some people are Mac, some people are Ruby. Some people are Mordecai, Rigby, you know, some people are Jake, some people are Finns. That's the world. That's how it works. And I'm quite niche about my interests, too, so I'm like, I'm not just gonna put my two cents in where it doesn't make sense. <laughs> just, that's common sense. Um, and before that, when I spoke a few times, they, a girl, said that I talk like a white girl, but mind you, she herself was biracial. So it was like, basically, they could say whatever they want to me. <laughs> But, you know, the second I say something, it's like, oh no. Oh, no way. But, um, and I've never, I've never told anyone this story. I wanted to share this to add depth to my personal abhorrence of this depiction of outsiders and or the representation of outsiders. These girls, the five, left the table I sat at because of what I said. And the table was already half empty. The table that I sat out and they left that table to cram into another already full table just because of me because of something I said or did and I still don't know what it was they never told me I never asked um and you know and I'm like did I offend one did I offend all of them I don't know they were clicky so so then from the other table they would glance at me in a giggle because I was alone at a large table in the cafeteria while all the others were at a full table and that spiraled into pity from the art teacher who was assigned to my lunch period Anyway, I survived the week or less. I think it might have been three days. I can't really remember what. It was a long time ago, and I try not to remember, to be honest. <laughs> but I can't, I can't imagine the scenario going any differently. I mean, imagine not thinking of yourself and following someone else for, I guess, validation. Anyway, I don't, I don't consider that a sort of bullying situation. Rather, just being the subject of ridicule. Is that paraphrasing? Is that semantics? Maybe. Um, anyway, another thing. YouTube should, um, adapt Netflix's double liking system. I've tried to like videos twice <laughs> because I'm forgetful. Only to unlike them, then I have to re-like them, and it's, it's tedious. 
Anyway, if you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on, so I will in my next video. Thank you for watching.